We interviewed him last week. He had been on probably six months. It's great to have him back. Our own Kit Daniels went down to a Von Mies Institute uh, event and talked to him in detail. Also talked to former Congressman Ron Paul. Uh, Lou Rockwell, lourockwell.com, excellent news site as well. And uh, again, um, I can't go over all of his bio. It would take too long. But he's the chairman of the Lubin Von Mies Institute, Austrian Economics, the answer to crony capitalism, in my view. And, of course, he served as Ron Paul's chief of staff and a lot more. He was also the Republican Party nomination. Uh, he he uh, ran that exploratory committee for Ron Paul as well. And, and I, I'm going to stop right there, sir. Um, I mean, you've heard my preface, but, but I'm asking you, you know, as a knowledgeable uh, statesman in the fight for human dignity, what is this hallucination we're witnessing? Is this the death throes? Is it a tenter tantrum? Or do you disagree with me? Or are we seeing just bizarre displays of collectivist mental illness because it just gets, you know, ban the word father and mother, ban the words founding fathers, UG or Z. I mean, it's it's beyond any cult. If I read a novel about a cult like this, I wouldn't believe it. I mean, it's cult programming. What do you say to that rant, sir? Well, it, it, it is crazy. And I, I somehow think it's the neocons. I mean, I can't, I can't believe that sometimes I miss the Rockefeller world empire. As evil as they were, they didn't actually seem to be insane. Uh, this bunch is insane. I don't care whether it's Hillary or it's the Republican versions of Rubio and uh, Jeb Bush and, and uh, Ted Cruz and, and of course, Bernie Sanders. Um, there are a lot of crazy people, warmongers, people who clearly lust for shedding of blood. They lust for the shedding of blood of others. Uh, they lust too often for the shedding of the blood of Americans, too. So um, it's absolutely true. They're sort of revealing their true selves. They do seem to be reveling in their victories. And they are they are enforcing insane policies. I mean, can you believe that they talk about um, mandating the registration of women for the draft? And according to the poll, anyway, 61% of American men went along with this. I mean, that's insane, too. Why, in, you know, of course... In some sense, we can see the regime in, in these sorts of um, uh, activities is wanting to make men into women and women into men. Uh, and that goes along with all what you're talking about, the pronouns and, and the getting rid of mothers and fathers, not having boys and, and girls sections in toy stores or boys and girls sections in clothing departments. Uh, everything has to be the same or rather the same. What did Facebook say? That there were 65 genders uh, that you could choose among uh, for your own on Facebook. So uh, it's uh, this goes right along with the crazed statism. Uh, they are um, uh, just reveling in their power. And of course, these are people who love to do this to human beings. They just love to bomb. They love to kill, love to crush. They love to dominate. They love to lie to us. They love to take our children away. And they like to destroy our communities. Robert Nisbet, the great libertarian socialist, excuse me, sociologist, uh, pointed out that the state seeks to destroy every what he called intermediating institution. That is everything that stands to when he said the naked individual and state power. So they want to get rid of states as versus the Fed. They want to get rid of communities. They want to get rid of businesses, of churches. Ultimately, they want to get rid of the family. They want to get rid of parents. And you're, this is, of course, Plato's dream. This has been an ancient dream of these people. This is nothing new. Well, that's why I love getting you on because you, you, we could say the French Revolution, the Jacobins trying to hijack the liberty movement was the most modern, you know, uh, roots of communism. But really, it goes back to Plato yeah, and, and, and his plan to raise us like cattle and, and in the family itself. But then he would write the allegory of the cave, supposedly responding to his own vision. Uh, but he really is their God. Uh, he really is their model. Uh, how is their plan going? And, of course, I think you had a Freudian slip there because I know you've written about the so-called uh, uh, democratic socialism not existing uh, with or, or, or libertarian socialism of Bernie Sanders. I mean, I, I don't want to hate Sanders, and it's true he's not owned by crony capitalists, but, I mean, he's got to know socialism is a disaster. Well, he, you know, he says some good things. Uh, in the debate with Hillary the other night, he accused her of being pals with Kissinger. And as you say, talked about Kissinger having uh, caused the genocide in, uh, in Cambodia. And by the way, that's just the beginning of Kissinger's war crimes. This is a very bad man. Man, and Bernie might have pointed out, he's a, a big crony capitalist on Wall Street, too. Very, very bad guy. Uh, and he was right to point out that Hillary's connected with him. On the other hand, 
Bernie himself is clearly a neocon. You, you only had to hear him talk last night about uh, the alleged threat from Russia and why the U.S. needs to. Um, he practically called for a nuclear war with Russia. So uh, this guy is no anti-war guy. He's not a peace guy. Um, he reminds me that the neocons were originally all Trotskyites. Now they sort of have moved away from that or pretend to move away from it. He's a throwback. Uh, Again, talk about Neocon. Twilight Zone. You just throw that out there. It's totally true. It's even been in you know, the Wall Street Journal, New York Times. It's not debatable that the entire neocon command base got run out of Russia. Their leader got killed with a uh, ice axe in Mexico, Trotsky. Mm -hmm. And then they ran up here and, and took over the whole Republican movement and National Review and the CIA brought them in and then sent them into Chicago Business School. And now they're back. They're all after Donald Trump. Uh, now, obviously, Donald's not perfect. He says some you know, stuff that I disagree with. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's him playing politics. With Bernie, it's a little bit different because of the neocon background than hating Russia so much, which you just astutely spoke to. So maybe get into some background on that. But Trump and Bernie, though, being so popular, despite what mainstream media does, shows me that this is a emblematic gauge or weather vane, bellwether, of the fact that there is a true uprising against the establishment taking place right now. Lou Rockwell. Well, Trump says a lot of good things. He says a lot of bad things. He doesn't have a theory. I mean, there there always need to be intellectuals in any movement like this. It can't just be one guy spouting off. There has to be a considered plan. There has to be a considered strategy. And unfortunately, that's that's lacking. On the other hand, his support, I would say, is by and large a very good thing. Uh, Bernie's support, um, I don't know to what extent, uh, you know, when I, uh, when he was talking about Kissinger last night, I wondered how many of his millennials have even, even heard of Kissinger, let alone, let alone know its significance. Um, but I was glad he did it. On the other hand, I think he's, I think, uh, he's fundamentally a very bad guy. Obviously, Hillary is a very bad person. All the Republicans are pretty bad. And Trump is sometimes good, sometimes bad. But just the fact that these guys are both hated by the establishment, I think especially I don't know to what extent the hatred of Bernie uh, is real as versus manufactured. Not that they wouldn't rather have Hillary, but I think they could do just fine with Sanders. Socialism, yeah, socialism is, is a disaster. He doesn't, he's not a classic socialist. He doesn't want the government to own the means of production. He simply wants them controlled by the government. This is more properly described actually as fascism. That's right, he's more of a fascist. Socialism, yeah. And uh, he's not a uh, civil libertarian. He wants the entire social justice warrior um, program put into place. He wants egalitarianism in force on society. He wants everybody made equal by the state. And this is, this is something that comes out of the, you talked about the French Revolution, although we can trace it back to the Gracchi in ancient Rome, there has earlier roots, the notion that the state can make everybody equal. Now, since nobody is equal, Mises said that the key fact about the human race is our radical inequality. And he said, thank goodness, because if we weren't unequal, we were all identical. There couldn't be a market. There couldn't be social cooperation. There couldn't even be civilization. So inequality is not only a natural thing, a fundamental thing, but it's a good thing. So, but ever since, especially the French Revolution, these people have argued the state should make us equal. Since that's actually impossible, it gives all power to the state. So you can't, you have to believe in And then all you do is create and, a psychotic ruling class that didn't even get there by being some conquering king who at least had some attributes that he was a more manipulative, smarter, uh, you know, uh, systematic controller. That's a horrible system as well. But instead, the most weaseling crews of interloping sycophants get in control and then just start growing their system like a cancer. Have they gone too far, though, with screaming at their professors uh, and then the professors are fired because they dare say don't ban costume parties. I mean, is this level of just savage attacks on free speech, could that jolt what's left of the old left uh, back into their senses, or will they just circle the wagons on a power trip and say, no, we need totalitarianism to, to create our utopia? Because I see so much of the mainline left really becoming pure mercenaries of globalists and saying, no, we are totalitarian. I mean, I, I remember a few years ago, uh, the editor of the Financial Times of London came out and he said, and, and he named myself and others, but he said in two different articles, he said, okay, we are totalitarian, we are taking over, it is a planetary government, and we're smarter than you, and so we're going to do this. We deserve, because we're smarter, to rule you. 
And so to rule us, because they're so smart, though, they got to teach us that 2 plus 2 equals 5. So our kids are so fundamentally screwed up and know 60-plus genders and, and are obsessed with which potty they use instead of knowing how to read classical literature. I mean, what type of elite sabotages the brain of humanity so they can rule a madhouse of morons? I mean, that doesn't sound like an elite to me, uh, Mr. Rockwell. Well, it's, it, it, it's an elite uh, in that they want to rule all the rest of us, and they think that by all the immigration policies, all the, their economic policies, all their social policies, they can uh, uh, make everybody just, um, you know, unhappy, uh, make them frustrated, make them uh, depressed, and not resist. So they feel that even though the average production ability of the average American may go down, in the in the uh, uh, all of it together, there's still plenty for them to. Uh, and they and they, there is a you know as you point out a satanic element too. They actually like evil. Uh, you know, in some of these elite groups that you've you've exposed, people worship pagan gods and very. And these, this is not sounds like a joke. Sounds like a bad joke, uh, but they are attracted to evil and to Satan and so forth. Yes. Well, I mean, Lou Rockwell, like you always cut right to the heart of it. Satanic, I mean, right? So, you always um, please continue on that line because I was brought up a Christian. I believe in God, but I wasn't, you know, a strong Christian, if you'd call it that. And I was like, you know, devil, okay, kind of a bad energy in the universe, whatever. But the more I studied the globalist elites uh, and, and what they're involved in, and then criminology, how psychopaths usually, uh, you know, end up actually being into Satanism, whether God's real or not, for the sake of argument for atheists. Still, in criminology and psychology, there is a manifestation. The Nazis were into the occult. Uh, Lenin was into the occult. Uh, they sell us that, oh, there's no God, because they want to have the state be God, as you pointed out. But really, behind closed doors, they're into occultism. Please elaborate on that and why you think Satanists across America, the stories on DrudgeReport.com, are such big supporters of Bernie. I thought a real Satanist... You know, they claim Anton LaVey's style is all about empowering the individual and doing what you want, do as thou wilt, is the whole of the law. But no, it isn't really that, is it? You sell people on joining your cult, you're going to have fun, but really you're going to be slaves on Satan's plantation. Lou Rockwell? Well, of course, and, and even though they said do as thou wilt, you're not allowed to do as, as thou wilt. Uh, you have to do what they want. And, uh, you know, this is a very warped people. Um, are they, are, you know, does, does Satan respond to this sort of thing? I mean, are they actually uh, in connect, you know, in, in uh, somehow communicating with him? I, you know, that I don't know. But they would like to be, and they are, you know, self-consciously pro-evil. Uh, so they enjoy killing, uh, and they enjoy, um, you know, all kinds of horrible, uh, horrible practices with other human beings that they engage in, um, some of these cults really horrendous and of course they're all leftists and i don't think we you know you asked earlier can we count on the left i, I don't think so i think the left has to be entirely rejected i mean i remember the last time i talked to noam chomsky guys written a lot of good stuff this was uh during the 2008 campaign and he was very very anti-ron paul and he told me he would support hillary over ron paul this is an alleged anti-war guy um and you know why was that well it's because they, they hate private property and they hate everything that stems from private property. Private property is essential to the family. It's essential to, to economic life. It's essential to human civilization. They want to smash it all. Um, they're far worse than anybody in, uh, in Orwell's 1984. And, of course, they've got unbelievable technology to spy on us. Uh, the government now admits that the whole point of the uh, Internet of Things is to spy on us in our homes. Um, they're spying on us to an extent that Hitler or Stalin or, or a Big Brother in Orwell yes. never could have dreamed of. And they're still not satisfied. They're still pushing. They want to get rid of cash. Uh, the better to control us. Oh, they I've talked to, to a lot of top uh, leftists as you have, and, and if you're having dinner with them, they'll admit it. They'll go, listen, I know the government's staging false flags. I know they're bringing the drugs in. I know they're doing all these bad things. But it's going to be our government when we finally get control of it. So we want it to be as big as possible. And you're right. They see anybody with their own property... That's why they have a war on lemonade stands and farmers markets in the Amish. Uh -huh. They just right. see any normal, independent human activity, a happy Amish family out there, healthy, you know, doing well, self-sufficient, and they pull their hair out because those Amish aren't watching television thinking Hillary's God. Well, also, they don't want people being happy. 
You know, it's what Mencken said about the Puritans. It applies to these guys. They can't stand it if anybody's leading a normal life and is happy and fulfilled.